America, 1838. William Walker is a man looking for his passion. More fittingly, he's a boy looking for his passion because he was only 14 when he graduated college. His parents wished him to join the priesthood, but such a life was not for him. Instead, he wandered, graduating med school at 19, became a lawyer in his 20s, a journalist by 25, yet nothing stirred his heart. Until one day, he had a brush with death as an angry clerk shot him twice in a duel. And perhaps in that moment, Walker came to realize what he wanted out of life. Life wasn't about a lofty career or hollow pride. Life was about conquering vast swaths of Central America to become an unquestioned dictator. This video was brought to you by NordPass. Free stuff at the end. Sadly for Walker, the US just finished its all-you-can-swipe buffet to Mexico, and it's all full. For now. Walker therefore traveled down to Mexico to ask politely if he could colonize just a little piece, and they say no. He went back to the US, determined not to let such a minor inconvenience as the Mexican government get in the way of his dreams. Instead, he raises his own private army. Unfortunately, that army he raised consisted of only 45 men. His actual plan was to conquer 124,000 square miles of Mexican land with a team smaller than the Dallas Cowboys. But turns out nobody lived in Baja California at the time, so they actually managed to take over the capital. Walker declared himself president of the Republic of Lower California, with his old law partner as his vice. Presumably they'd already hashed out the details over the water cooler. The thing is, Mexico had an actual army, so even though Walker changed his country's name to the Republic of Sonora and was definitely going to get around to conquering that state later, he got chased back to the border. Once back in California, he got put on trial for breaking the law that explicitly says you can't invade random countries by yourself, because yes, that's a real thing that the US actually had to deal with. Luckily, Walker told everybody how sorry he was because he just wanted to give the US a new slave state as a present and, quote, rescue Sonora from the savages, so it took the jury all of eight minutes to let him go. Fun fact, eight minutes is exactly how long it took for him to try again. There's civil war in Nicaragua, and the president, or one of them anyway, hears about this American dude with his own army who wants to lend a hand and says, come on down, my boy. And the mad lad conquers the enemy capital, oversees the treaty putting the country back together, and installs a puppet government. Central America was not particularly happy about this, but what really sealed the deal was when Walker gave Nicaragua's railroad contract to someone new, making the American, who used to run them, very angry. That American was one Cornelius Vanderbilt, who probably controlled ten times the wealth of Walker's entire country. Suffice it to say, Willie's gonna have a bad time. Costa Rica invades and gets Honduras and El Salvador to help, and together with Vanderbilt's general, they start wiping the floor with Walker's Nicaragua. In case you couldn't tell, Walker's not a cool dude, so when he retreats, he dumps corpses in the wells, so when the soldiers get thirsty, they get cholera, and take it back home, and 10% of Costa Rica dies. Walker's basically gone full Hail Mary. He kicks out his figurehead and tries to seduce the U.S. South into helping him by making English the official language and making slavery legal again. The Central American Coalition gets to the capital first, Walker burns the place to the ground, he's surrounded and on his way to starving, when the U.S. Navy picks him up and bails him out. When he gets off the boat in New Orleans, apparently he's the second coming of Caesar because there's a huge crowd waiting for him chanting, Speech! 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 And they follow him all the way back to his hotel until finally he comes out onto his balcony and delivers a speech. Another speech! 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 And he delivers a second speech. He's so popular, in fact, that he goes on tour and rallies support for, you guessed it, another invasion of Nicaragua. But Walker's kind of a public figure now, so the government knows what he's up to and arrests him. But they put him on probation during his trial, so he just grabs however many followers happen to be in New Orleans, they grab the first boat to Nicaragua, and they just kinda wing it. The US government, though, it's really easy to figure out where they're going, so they just wait off the coast of Nicaragua and watch as Walker and his guys hop into rowboats in full view of them. But here's the thing. The commander goes, hmm, wait a second, if I stop them now, then I'm opening fire in a neutral port. But if I stop them on the shore, then I don't have any jurisdiction. But if I stop them now, and he watches all of them get away. 
Uh, but it turns out it's really hard to wing National Conquest with one boat full of dudes, so Walker and friends have to wait on this sandbar while a couple of their guys go to steal a boat upriver. Meanwhile, four men of war show up off the coast, and they don't leave. What you fellas up to? Here to arrest you, aren't we? I uh, surrender to the United States. So he's dragged back to New York, where he's given a firm slap on the wrist. Meanwhile, the guy who arrested him gets fired. Walker goes back to whining and dining throughout the South, and he pitches everyone on this big new idea. Literally the same thing he did like a year ago. And so, wash, rinse, repeat, it's back to Nicaragua. Only this time, the US doesn't even have to do anything because they crashed their ship off the coast of Belize. Meanwhile, Britain took some islands from Honduras, and now they're giving them back, but most of the people there are British, and they want to stay British. So they invite William Walker, champion of the people, and tell him he can enslave all the black people there if he comes and takes over once the islands go back to Honduras. Britain and Honduras then notice a suspicious amount of tourism going on, and decide to postpone the transfer. So Walker... Well, he just decides to have a go at attacking Honduras, I guess. He takes over one fort, and then the British show up, and he has no plans, and he surrenders. But this time, when he's on the ship, he notices... Hey, fellas, this compass says y'all are going the wrong way. See, America's not going to America, are we? And they give him to Honduras, where he gets shot to death. Hi. Silly History Boy here to give you a talk about password security. Is this sponsored? Of course, but if there's one thing you should take away from this segment, it's this. Using the same password across multiple accounts is risky business. One website you forgot you signed up for gets breached and the whole house of cards falls over. Now there's two ways around this. First, you can create new passwords like these for every account and try to remember which is which. Or, you make one rock-solid password only for your password manager, and NordPass handles the rest. They're already a leading brand in online security with their VPN, and if you really think you know their system's weak spot, they'll pay you to break it. Even in the worst-case scenario, every password they generate for you is encrypted, so the only way to get your passwords is with your password that you never use anywhere else. If that sounds better than trying to remember if Netflix was waltzing Tunic Zebras 458 or waltzing Mango Clinic 3095, or was it Tango Zebra Clinic? You can get a month of premium for free at nordpass.com slash jackrackham, or use the code jackrackham to get 10% off a two-year plan. See you all next time.